Early on Sunday morning, several women go to the tomb to anoint his body. They arrive to find the stone rolled away and his neighbor's body gone. Suddenly, two men near him ask, Why do you look for a living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Let us rejoice and 
be glad in it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, God of new life and new possibilities, we gather to sing our songs of gladness and to share your steadfast love. Some of us come from shadows of our lives as we anticipate the light. Some of us come eager to learn but are unsure of what it all means. Some of us come weary, grateful to discover hope. Wherever we have come from, may we all find you, the risen Christ, the one who offered death and proclaims new life for all. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Our hymn of praise is Christ the Lord is risen today. Jesus, the Lamb of God. 
So it's Easter time. We talk about how the Lamb of God was sacrificed. And because of that, we are forgiven. And because then, that sacrificial lamb didn't stay down. He got back up. He got back up and came out of the tomb. Isn't that great? To have a lamb. Have a lamb. Now I have a very important prize for you. This is the best one. And inside the egg is chocolate. Why do you get chocolate? His chocolate is great. <laughs> but this, this holds the best prize ever. You want to open it? Open it. Tell us what's in it. What's in it? What'd you get? Yes, yeah, some of them I couldn't get open either. Well, where's your prize? Did I forget to put them in? No, I didn't. That is the prize. It's empty. That reminds us that we're going to hear the story when Mary... Yeah, there's chocolate in that one. But this one, where'd it go? This one's the prize. The empty one's the real prize. That reminds us that when they walked to the tomb, Jesus wasn't there. Okay. Jesus was not there. The tomb was empty. And that's the best prize ever. Because you know why? Why was he in the tomb? Why was Jesus in the tomb? You know? You know? Yeah. Playing bubble. What? Playing in the Okay. Well... <laughs> Yeah, he was in the dirt. Yeah, I don't think he was playing though. Well, she's close. He was in the dirt. Um, he was in a tomb. And he died. That was his grave. He was in the tomb because he died. But when they came back in the morning, he wasn't there. Where'd he go? He wasn't there. Did they move him? No. Did, did he evaporate? No. Did he get up and walk away? Yes, you remember the story, don't you? He got up. He, he came back to life. That's why we sing Christ is risen, because he rose. He stood up and he walked out of the tomb and he said, Mary, I'm here. Go tell everybody. And you think Mary went to tell everybody? Yes, she did. She went to tell everybody. So this day reminds us that the tomb is empty and Jesus lives. Can we pray? Father God, thank you for the empty tomb. For that means Jesus rose for us and the story continues and we are all made new. Come with us this day as we celebrate. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can take your prizes. Here's your XMPA. You can go back to your seats. Don't lift up your dress too high. <laughs>
Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our New Testament lesson is, can be found in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name.
the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We relive all this past week. Our emotions have been, they've been down, there have been tears, there's been sadness, there's been just numbness, and then there's joy. Thursday we shared in the in the table. We shared in the story of Jesus in the garden and how Judas betrayed him with a kiss. A kiss that is meant to show love. Yet he was betrayed with that kiss. He was taken away by guards, hung on a cross, buried. We shared those stories on Thursday and Friday nights. And everyone thought well, things have changed. Things have changed. What would happen to them now Jesus was gone? Would they be captured? Would they be killed as well? Those who believed were so fearful. They were sad. And they were afraid. They didn't know what would happen. And then, if that didn't happen, would things go back the way they used to be? Would Peter and Andrew and James and John have to go back to fishing? Would Matthew have to go back to work now for the Romans? They sat and they, they thought about all this. They worried about all of this. But then Mary came. Mary walked to the grave that morning. Jesus was not properly prepared for burial. They had to wait because it was the Passover Sabbath. So that morning, early in the morning, and we did this this morning, we went, we walked with Mary to the cross, to the tomb. But Mary got there, and there was no one there. Now, did she remember Jesus' words? No, she was afraid. She was afraid. She said, where have you taken my Lord? She ran back. She got Peter and John, and they ran to the tomb, and they looked. They looked inside. And all they found were the wrappings. The wrappings that were around his body were, were folded at the feet. The cloth that surrounded his head was at the other end. She was, they were all terrified, and John and Peter, they had that glimmer of belief. It, did he really? Could it be? They just weren't sure, and they went back to Jerusalem. But Mary stayed. She was crying. She was, he was gone. Now he really was gone. They couldn't even give him a proper buried because someone had taken it. And she found and saw the man there. She thought with the gardener. And she said, where have you taken my Lord? And as soon as he said her name, Mary, it all came. She knew who he was. She said, Rabboni, teacher. She went to grab him, but he said, don't can't hold on to me yet, but I want you to go tell the story. Go back, tell my brothers, I'll be there to see them. Wait for me. So you know, Mary had already walked from Jerusalem to the tomb. It wasn't around the block. She ran back to get Peter and John. She ran back to the tomb with them. And now, she ran back again. She ran back to Jerusalem, excited this time. For the first time, she was so excited. And she told them, I have seen the Lord. What a message. Could you imagine? You were chosen to give that message to everyone else. Mary was chosen. She gave them the whole story. And they believed. She did not have to say, well, I guess she had to be there. 
because they were ready to believe. They saw he was gone, and they could be true. And then she came and told the story, and it was true. Jesus, when he had told them all along, I must die on the cross. I must be buried, but I will be back. The story is all true. She did not have to say you had to be there. Things did not have to go back to the way they were. Everything was made new through the power of God Almighty. This happened because God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would have eternal life. That is a great love. That is a great story worth telling. Know the story so that you can tell it to others and not have to say, well, I guess you need to be there. Tell the story. Get others excited. This is a new beginning for us, too, because this year might be the year that something just sparks in your heart and you have to go tell it like Mary did. This year is different for you because things have changed in this world. Not all for the better. Things have changed and the world needs this story. So like Mary, we have all been chosen to go out and tell others. We need to say Christ is alive. Christ is alive. Did you know that? We have inherited the kingdom with Jesus. And we have inherited the responsibility with the disciples. This morning we walked in the dark to the tomb. Now we must run with Mary to tell the story that Christ the Lord is risen today and has made everything new. Christ is risen. Let's do it again. <laughs> Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
So keep them in prayer. Allison and Lilith, keep them in prayer. They had COVID. Lilith was in the hospital. They're doing well. They're doing well. They're just getting now. Well, please keep our own Donna in prayer here as she is just not feeling right and they're, they need to figure out what is wrong. For Bishop Cynthia Moore-Cacoy as she has during Holy Week um, went back to Baltimore to bury her mother who has gone on to glory. For Ron Pope, um, no relation to Ed that I know of. For Doris and Jeff, Charlie, Elton, and veterans, we have so many on here who need prayer. Please take your bulletins home. Keep these people in prayer all week. For if you're more for our study. Sounds like the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> um, for our shut-in to you know they would love to be here today. So please keep Tom and Glenn and Betty and and Martha and Emily and Marlene in prayer. <coughs> Send them a card. Say hello. Jeff? I have an update on Jeff Kite. Um, he passed away yesterday. Oh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. Found out he had pancreatic pancreatic cancer, not uh, colon cancer. So. Oh. Please keep the Kite family in prayer. Yeah, we go on to our joys. Happy birthday, Roxanna. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And on the same day is Darla. Loving us so much that you sent your son. 
wanted to live with us, to teach us while he was here, to love us, love us enough to die for us. And then by your power, he rose again on this Easter morning so many years ago. So we celebrate each year. We celebrate the risen Christ. And it's all because of you. So Father God, knowing that, believing that with all our heart, we come to you and trust you with our loved ones. We trust you with all those who we lift up in prayer. You've heard all the names before us. Lord, we thank you that Dick is here and that he feels well enough to be here with us. We pray. We pray that they find what is going on in their big to make them feel better or more. Better yet, we ask that you come and surround him. Place your healing hands, healing hands upon him that he may live, that he may feel so much better. And Lord, right across the aisle, we have George here today, and we just keep seeing blessings upon blessings. We see blessings of speaking with old friends, with speaking with new friends, speaking with those we haven't seen, speaking with those we just saw two nights ago. What a joyous world this is. Father God, on this day, we ask you to be with the Kite family. May they remember. May they remember this resurrection day because that means Jeff. Jeff has that resurrection as well. He is not in the grave. Pray that you be with the Moore family as they too grieve the passing of Joan, but knowing that she has received her treasures in heaven. So, with all the prayers that are before us, we pray this morning that you bring the sons home, that Kevin will be home close to his father, that Roxanna and Darla will celebrate birthdays. And Lord, thank you for my brother Larry, who will also celebrate a birthday this week. We have been gifted that he was here. And he's still in our lives here on earth. Father God, you send us examples of what an example of Marilyn and Harry. 57 years old. How wonderful that you sent Marilyn here show us that even in this world it can be done. We just need to follow you. So we come to you as your children. We come and we pray to you and we say those precious words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The gift of God is here with us, for the presence of the risen Christ is with us always. In gratitude. May we offer our gifts and ourselves as we give thanks to the Lord who is good. Truly, God's steadfast love endures forever.
we give you glory, we give you thanks. With resurrection coming in our hearts, our minds are tuned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom come. Amen. Please remain standing and turn to page 13 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves the praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on each person gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we teach at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, and Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many share in the one loaf, the one body broken of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we can share in the cup of salvation, the cup of forgiveness poured out for each one of us from the cross. In the United Methodist Church, all are welcome to this table, regardless of age, baptismal status, or church membership. If the Holy Spirit calls you forward, come. Follow that lead. If you have chosen to partake of the secured elements that you found at the door, if, that's what, if that, that is your preferred method of communion this day, you may peel back and prepare your elements. The other choice is to come to the rail. There are more secure elements in the back or in the front if you choose to go that direction. Come. The table of our Lord is ready.
bread represents the extent to which Christ was obedient even into death. As we take and eat, may our trusting and obeying be a part of our everyday life in Christ. Take and eat. This cup is a cup of promise fulfilled with Christ's love. Take and drink and be nourished with this cup that gives power, vision, strength, and courage to live the Christian life. We are reminded that we are called to this table of the Lord not by our own wisdom, but simply by God's saving grace through Jesus Christ. Arise and go with grateful hearts and spirits, walking in the presence of Christ. Amen.
praise your name for the love. And in all circumstances, we praise your name for being with us. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us stand, let us sing for he